With the road to WrestleMania in full swing, WWE has taken an exit at Elimination Chamber. With four matches already made for the event, next Sunday's pay-per-view is looking to build even more as we get closer to the show of shows. What's up everyone, Jose G here bringing you SK Wrestling's Week in Wrestling. On Monday night, Shane McMahon returned to drop a huge announcement regarding the WWE title. WWE official Adam Pearce was with Shane as both men announced that Drew McIntyre will defend his WWE Championship inside the Elimination Chamber. The five participants that will compete for the most prestigious title in the company are all former world champions. It was revealed that the phenomenal one, AJ Styles, the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy, the Viper, Randy Orton, the Celtic warrior, Sheamus, and the A-lister, The Miz, will all be inside the chamber. A gauntlet match was set for next Monday to see who enters the chamber last. After winning the 2021 Royal Rumble match, Edge spent last week traveling to Raw, NXT, and SmackDown as he contemplated which world champion he will face at WrestleMania. With the announcement of the WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match, the R-rated superstar informed the WWE Universe that he won't make his decision on which world champion he will face at WrestleMania until after the WWE title is decided. He was soon interrupted by The Miz alongside John Morrison and Angel Garza, who proclaimed that Edge was just delaying the inevitable because no matter who he faced at WrestleMania, all that will matter at the show of shows is that Mr. Money in the Bank will walk out with the world title. In response, Edge verbally took the A-lister apart in intense fashion, explaining that he was playing on a different level of high-stakes poker, while Miz was playing Old Maid. He made the distinction that the A-lister talked of being champion while he needs to be the champion. In recent weeks, Riddle proved that he will stop at nothing for an opportunity to be the new United States champion. After being rendered unconscious by three full Nelsons from the vicious Bobby Lashley last week, Riddle is still ready for more. Nevertheless, Keith Lee was also convinced he could take on Lashley and is willing to go through the ultimate bro to get there in a one-on-one -on -one showdown with MVP scouting the competition. Despite the unrelenting resilience and amazing athletic prowess of Riddle, Lee reigned supreme in the hard-fought matchup with a spirit bomb. After the bell, though, Lashley emerged and showed absolute dominance with unrelenting assault on both competitors. After once again punishing the ultimate bro with the full Nelson, the chief hurt officer hurled Lee into the steel ring post and mauled him with the ring steps. After an injury caused her to lose her opportunity to compete for the WWE Women's Tag Team titles back at WWE TLC, Lana and the re-emerging Naomi joined forces in pursuit of Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler's titles. After the hopeful tandem scored a victory in a triple threat tag team match to win a future opportunity at the gold last week, Lana stepped into a tables match against a woman who drove her through the announce table nine times. Although Lana was quite simply tortured throughout the contest, the irresistible force made the critical mistake of turning her back on her opponent when she was outside the ring. Lana quickly capitalized by charging at her foe and sending her flying into the table for the win. In the aftermath, Baszler set her sights on the victorious Lana, only to have her efforts thwarted by Naomi. With a return last week and her new tag team partner Lana, Naomi found herself in an impromptu match against the ruthless Shayna Baszler. When Baszler made the mistake of turning her attention to Lana outside the ring, Naomi took advantage and hooked her opponent into a small package for the three count. In the wake of the announcement that WWE Champion Drew McIntyre will defend his title against five superstars inside Elimination Chamber, McIntyre rekindled his long-standing rivalry in the Raw main event against Randy Orton, one of the superstars who will face him inside the dreaded structure. The battle lived up to the hype. Although Sheamus emerged to distract his former friend mid-match, that still couldn't take away from the classic nature of the contest between the two absolute warriors. Then, in the final moments, Sheamus attempted to seize his own moment and the ring to try to hit a bro kick on McIntyre for the second week in a row. Instead, he caught the Viper and paved the way for Drew to get some payback on the Celtic Warrior with a Claymore kick. Although the match ended without a clear winner, McIntyre stood tall en route to a WWE Elimination Chamber. On the black and gold brand, we saw semifinals action in both men's and women's Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. On the men's side, MSK and grizzled young veterans punched their tickets to the finals at NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day, with MSK defeating Legado del Fantasma and GYV defeating Timothy Thatcher and Old Man Champa. On the women's side, Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart defeat The Ways, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, securing their spots in the finals against Dakota Kai and Big Mommy Cool Raquel Gonzalez. 
For the first time in nearly two months, the technical savage returned to NXT and he was nearly unrecognizable. Cameron Grimes revealed he came into some money thanks to his investment in GameStop. If the NXT universe found the loudmouth Grimes to be obnoxious before, well, they haven't seen anything yet. Johnny Gargano began the night seeking a suspension for Kushida, and NXT general manager William Regal wasn't having it. With the North American champion insisting that Kushida injured his left arm in their altercation last week, Regal gave Gargano the option for Austin Theory to instead defend the title in his place or to forfeit the title altogether. But the legitimacy of Gargano's injury was quickly exposed when Kushida emerged to pull the title away, only for Gargano to ardently tug his gold back from NXT's resident time splitter. Later on, Gargano fired back by blasting Kushida with a superkick during his match against Theory, forcing the referee to call for a disqualification. Theory was suddenly pulled underneath the ring when Gargano seemed to rescue him, none other than Dexter Loomis emerged. With Kushida applying the hoverboard lock on Gargano and Loomis locking Theory in silence, the way appeared to be in dire straits going into NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day. On the blue brand, Roman Reigns had a blockbuster announcement to open up the show. As the Tribal Chief is making his way to the ring, WWE official Adam Pearce is waiting for Roman inside the ring. Pearce announced that Roman Reigns will be defending his Universal title inside the Elimination Chamber just like Drew McIntyre. But the special counsel to the Tribal Chief puts the brakes on the match and said that yes, Roman is contractually obligated to defend his title at Elimination Chamber, but not inside the Elimination Chamber. Heyman then suggested that Pierce has the chamber match and the winner of that match will get an immediate title shot against the head of the table. Adam Pierce seemed to oblige and already thought of two men who didn't need to qualify, naming his cousin Jay Uso and Kevin Owens. The decision did not sit well with Reigns as he got in Pierce's face to intimidate the WWE official. A series of qualifying matches for the Elimination Chamber were booked by Sonya Deville and Adam Pearce. We had two tag team matches where the winners of the matches would qualify for the Chamber match. We saw King Corbin and Sami Zayn teaming up and defeating Rey and Dominic Mysterio, and Daniel Bryan and Cesaro defeating the SmackDown Tag Team Champions Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode to secure their spot inside the Chamber. After defeating Apollo Crews and Sami Zayn in a triple threat match to retain his Intercontinental Championship last week, Big E reflected on the win because he wanted to be a fighting champion. He then began to issue an open challenge to find his next challenger. Crews interrupted before he could, however, and tried to get another opportunity at Big E's title for himself. In response, the powerhouse of positivity told Crews to go back to catering because they were done, requesting that his next challenger come to the ring. Shinsuke Nakamura answered the call and left Crews fuming at ringside. The king of strong style went on to give a tremendous challenge to Big E. Nevertheless, the power of positivity grabbed the upper hand and prepared to hit the big ending. Before he could, however, Cruz climbed into the ring and hit the title holder with an explosive dropkick to bring an end to the match by disqualification. Returning to SmackDown for the first time since Survivor Series, Seth Rollins claimed that having a baby had changed him. Before long, he was once again declared himself as the leader of the locker room in true SmackDown savior fashion, causing the gathered superstars to take their leave. Cesaro stuck around longer than most and made Rollins believe that he had heard his message. But when the Swiss Superman turned his back on him as well, Rollins snapped and unleashed an unhinged beatdown on the departing competitor. Moments after the bell rang in the main event, all hell broke loose when chair-wielding Jey Uso, King Corbin, and Sami Zayn all entered the fray, and all five men began to attack each other in an all-out brawl. That all came to a halt real fast, though, when Owens hit the ring and unleashed a series of stunners to any Elimination Chamber opponent he could find, sending a definitive message to the Universal Champion, Roman Reigns. Thanks for watching SK Wrestling's Week in Wrestling. For more videos, follow us on all social media. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Download the Sports Kita app for the most up-to-date stories in the world of wrestling.